Hey everyone, Ken here with Ken's Creations and welcome to Ken's Creations Roadmap to Cricut Design Space. In this series of videos, we're gonna take a personal look at Cricut Design Space and all the different pieces that go into it that you can use to make the perfect project. So let's take a look at what today's installment is all about. Hey everyone, Ken here with Ken's Creations and I'm so excited to show you Cricut Design Space 2.0. Now what's the difference between the 2.0 version and the original version? Well in this video I'm going to show you a lot of the enhancements that they've made to make the user experience much more simpler. Now before we get started, I do want to address that Cricut has done a great job in this version in making sure they've worked out a lot of the bugs that were happening. I no longer see the shockwave errors. I definitely see a faster performance and I no longer see that rainbow circle of death that some people called it. So when it is loading something, it is much quicker and I'm not seeing design space freeze up. This is huge in my opinion, even though it's all behind the scenes and we don't necessarily see it as an enhancement on the screen, it's definitely made my experience more enjoyable. Now let's take a look at some of the features and enhancements you will be able to see on the screen and how they're going to better serve us when we're doing our designs. So the first thing we're going to go over is under the drop down menu. One of the new features that I love is the ability to manage our custom materials right here. Now we're able to select this option and go in and edit any of our materials or we can add new materials. Previously we had to wait to do this until we went to the cut option and add materials then. That's no longer the case as we can do it right here on our screen. So as you can see is all of the materials that Cricut has already pre-designed with everything. However, you can also add a new material down here. The great thing too is you can go through to any of these materials, hit the edit option and be able to edit the cut pressure, the material name, the multi-cut and save it with your new settings. So I love this feature. The other thing that they've done under the menu option is they've made setting up the machine a very quick process. I'm going to be doing a video on how to set up your Cricut Explorer Air and just how quick of a process it is. So let's take a look at one of my favorite upgrades to Cricut Design Space 2.0 and that's in the insert images tab. Now Cricut has done an amazing job in making searching for an image so much easier and they've given us so many options now to search for images. On the splash screen here you see, it looks pretty much the same. However, one of the noticeable differences you're all going to be excited about is the ability to make our thumbnails larger. By going over here, we can select this, and now as you can see, the thumbnails are much bigger. You can see much more detail, and when you hit the little eye, the font is easier to read. This was a huge upgrade because I know a lot of people hated how small the original thumbnails were, and how tiny that font was to read. One of the other great features that they've done is they've now given us categories. So now when searching for an image, you can break it down into a whole bunch of different categories based on what you're looking for. Under the feature tab, they have free this week, which is the image set Cricut has de determined as a free image that week. They have the most popular images, which is going to bring up all of the most downloaded images or purchased. And then they also have one of my favorites, the recently added. This is going to include any new image sets, fonts, or images Cricut has released on a cartridge. One of the other great features is under categories now, they have broken down all of the images with those keywords. And this is so important. I've told you so many times that when you're uploading an image, make sure to give it a keyword or sometimes referred to as a tag word. And Cricut has went through and basically broken those all down for us. So if we're looking for specific items now, for example, let's say we're looking for Easter projects, we can select the Easter. This is going to bring up all of the images to do with Easter. This would also include any images that you've tagged with the word Easter. So that's why it's so important to tag your images when coming into Design Space. Now one thing you're going to notice in Design Space 2.0 is these boxes when searching for images. These are subcategories. So now we have Easter on the screen. I can go through and as you see in our search box, it says search in Easter. So if I looked up bunny, this is going to look at all of the things that have to do with bunny just in the category of Easter. So if I don't want that category anymore, what do I do? I simply just click the X and it takes me back to my category screen. At the bottom, they've also given us the ability to search by brands. 
I love this because I know a lot of people are a huge Anna Griffin fan and to try to go through all of the images or just to search up Anna Griffin can be cumbersome. Now all you need to do is simply click on her brand name and it brings up all of the images she's ever been associated with. So this is a huge, huge feature uh, that they made a huge improvement on. Once again, we can go and click on that X to get rid of that category. Now let's take a look at something I know a lot of you will be excited about, and that's searching by cartridges. So finally, Cricut has given us a cartridge list in alphabetical order. On the screen, you're going to see images from that cartridge. It's going to tell you how many images are on the cartridge, and it's gonna tell you if this is a free set, a set you've purchased, a set you're subscribed to, or if there's a cost to the set. Now, if we scroll down, we can look at all the different cartridges and see what we have, but another great feature is the ability to search within a cartridge. Let's go up to Three Birds on Parade. If we hit View All 124 Images, this is going to bring up every image on that cartridge. However, now that we have this box to search by it, we can search, as you've seen here, search in Three Birds on Parade, and now we can search Easter, and it's going to bring up just the images that have to do with Easter on that cartridge. Once again, we just need to simply click out of that X to get back to our cartridges. However, once again, notice, because Easter's still in my search box, it's only bringing up the cartridges have to do with Easter. So if you ever find yourself saying, why is none of my cartridges there? Simply check your search engine and get rid of it. Now let's go back to the all image tabs and let's look at one other exciting addition, and that is the funnel. The funnel is giving you filters to look for your images. You have ownership, you have type, and layers. Under ownership, this is where you can actually tell Design Space, I just want to look at the subscriptions that I have. I just want to look at my purchased options. I want to look at images that are free to use. Under type, this is amazing. I make a lot of cards, and now they have, under type, a cards and envelope. So if I select that, that's going to bring up all of the cards and all of the envelopes in the Cricut image library and the images I've uploaded. And now I can actually, under cards and envelopes, because that's a search engine, I can type happy birthday, and it's going to bring up the cards and envelopes that have to do with birthday. It's absolutely so much easier to search for images. Let's go and get rid of that keyword, and let's get rid of the cards and envelope by hitting the X. Let's go back to the filter, and this time, Let's show you where to get all your printable images. By simply selecting printables, it's gonna bring up all of the images that are ready to go for print then cut. It's that simple. I also love the ability now to look up phrases. So I can select this and go phrases. Now all of this was originally in the design space, but it's just easier. They've made it so much easier to do. So it brings up all the phrases, and if I want to look up, let's say Christmas phrases, by simply hitting search, it's looking under Christmas and my keyword of phrases, and then it brings up any phrase to do with Christmas. Let's go ahead and click out of that, and one last option that you can look under the funnel is the ability to search by if your image has single layer or multi-layer. First, let's get rid of that Christmas in that box and go back, and as you can see, there's single layer or multi-layer. So if you're looking for a project that is only single layer, especially if you're doing a vinyl project, by selecting that, that's going to bring up all of your single layer images. This is going to include your print and cut images because those are considered a single layer image. We'll also include any of the images that are enhanced to use the writing feature of Cricut Design Space. So I hope you guys see all of the huge advancements that they've given us in searching for images. It's one of my favorite updates in Cricut Design Space. So let's go and take a look at some more of the other updates that came. Now that I've showed you how to search for an image, let's show you the enhancements that were made once you bring an image into session. I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly bring in an image here from Three Birds on Parade, and then we can take a look on how easy it is to manipulate those images. Let's go ahead and bring in this little girl here. Now when they are brought into Design Space, as you can see, we have now these options on four corners that make the image so easy to use. So we now have this X, which of course gets rid of your image. We also have this, which rotates your image all the way around. 
And as you can see, it gives you the degrees there, which is really nice. You have this image, which resizes your image with keeping ratio. And the reason we know that is because there's a lock over here. If this lock is here, that means that you are only able to move and manipulate the image within ratio of its original size. If I choose to unlock it, now I can see this is turned into a green uh, circle here. And now I able to go and move this image any size I want. So it's made some nice fluid motions for us. It's much quicker and it's easier to use on screen. Now you can of course still get all of these elements under your edit tab here. So you have your size, your rotate, everything. Um, but actually just doing it on the screen is just so much more easier. And this is going to mimic what it looks like on the iPad. So they did a great job in making sure that no matter what medium you're using, your iPad or your computer, it should look so the same. So looking at the upgrades and the layers through Canvas options up here, there wasn't as many upgrades as it was cosmetic upgrades. Things are much more easier to see. They've made the font bigger. Uh, they actually, when you select an item, it turns everything into gray to let you know that this item is right there. It also lets you know that this item is grouped because everything is gray. As soon as I hit ungroup, you're going to see everything go into its single category under baby girl. So they've just made it a much more user friendly experience. Drawing a box around it, right click and group you're going to see everything go right back to being grouped under that title. The differences in edit, sync, and canvas, once again, are cosmetic upgrades. Much easier to use, much faster. So as you can see in my sync, if I want to move this down to this color, I can move the entire row. I can move single images. It's just a lot more user friendly. So the big differences is going to be when you actually hit go. So let's show you that. So let's take a look at some of the exciting features that they did when you hit go. So when you hit go, it's still going to take you to your map preview. You can still move things on your mat. So as you can see here, I can move my items and stuff. However, the mats are much brighter and the, um, your grid is much more defined. You have these arrows over here that quickly let you go mat to mat. And then you also have the ability still to come down here and look at all your different mats. Now you also have your ability to change from a 12 by 12 to a 12 by 24 mat. Now when you hit go and you're going to go to the um, option to cut your materials, one of the cool things that I loved that they did is when you're going through the mats now, it actually is just going to bring up your cuts in the color. It used to be bring up the entire image there. You would see the image in black and just the lines, but now it actually is giving you where is it going to cut on the mat. It gives you a nice clear indication of where that will cut. So as you can see here, this is a perfect example. Everything else is white on the mat and it's basically saying this is where your cut's going to be. Now I'm going to show you, you can still go to custom materials and change your materials. However, a very cool, exciting feature that they've done here is a nice reminder. So if you have your smart dial set to iron on and you load your mat, this is so exciting. Cricut Design Space is going to let you know, hey, the smart dial is set to iron on, but you have not mirrored your image and that image is not checked. So you can actually sit there and say, awesome. I don't know how many times that I've done an iron on project. I have forgot to mirror it and then I've cut it just to find out, oh my goodness, I wasted material. Now design space is smart enough to say you've set that dial to iron on, but you have not mirrored your image. So you can actually hit okay and say, oops, I want to go ahead and go back to preview and mirror that image. So I can go back and go through and mirror all my images and say, yep, all of these are iron on, mirror my image, and then hit go, and it will know that you've mirrored it this time and it will cut it. So it's just a nice little feature that they've given us, but it makes a huge difference. So let's take a peek at a difference in upload images. Now upload images didn't have major upgrades, but the one thing it did do is change how you view your cut lines. So when we go in and bring in a PNG file, Everything's the same. However, when we get to the edit screen, you're going to see it looks a lot cleaner, a lot user friendly. And instead of looking at the cut lines through the scissors, you have a preview option down here. The preview lets you see where your cut lines are. So instead of using the scissors, you would use this preview button. 
Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. You would give your image a name, you would give it any tag words, and then you also have that box down there to say, hey, this is going to be a print and cut image, or no, I want it to be just a cuttable image. Then you would just hit save, and it would save it like normal in the uploaded image part of your Cricut Design Space upload station. So not too many differences. So the big difference in the set canvas is the ability to search for canvases. So they've given us categories now, so we can actually check to see if we want to do a clothing project. Are we doing something, um, a kid's craft, a party is an event, and they've given us a shirt option. So I can actually look for shirt. It will bring up all the shirts within um, the canvas option. So I can select a shirt. So let's just do a wide neck shirt, brings that uh, shirt into session and I can go over to canvas and once again it just gives us the options here of is it a custom shirt what size and we can change the color uh, so not a ton of differences just once again they're creating a better customer experience and giving us more options to be in control and make it easier to find the information we need so as you can see with Cricut Design Space 2.0, Cricut did a great job in making sure that the customer experience was their number one priority. They made searching for images so much easier. Even when you look at your files and open them, the customer experience is all focused on ease and how to understand things. The project names are in a nice hyperlink. Under the public, it lets you know, is this something you can share with the public and gives you a simple check mark or no check mark. Even the edit key and trash keys are just so much more simpler. The other great thing that I don't think a lot of people see is the enhancements they made behind the scenes. It is a much faster design space. There is not so many shockwaves. There's not so much waiting for that wheel. It is just a much better experience, and I think they did a great job. Well, I hope you learned something new in that installment of Ken's Creations Roadmap to Cricut Design Space. If you haven't seen all the videos in this series, make sure to click the playlist on your screen now. You'll be taken to the playlist with the collection of the entire Roadmap to Cricut Design Space videos. Also, if you haven't checked out my print to cut videos, make sure to click this playlist now. This will give you an inside look of how to calibrate your machine update your firmware, and get your machine ready for print to cut. All right, thanks for watching today's video. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Thanks.